Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a heavy-duty diver and Omega Seamaster Professional Series watch. This is the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean 600-meter chronograph. 45.5 millimeters in stainless steel. The watch is a substantial 19 millimeters thick without the NATO strap. It's 52 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and it has a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This is an exceptionally luxurious NATO. The watch is made of a combination of ceramic, steel, titanium, and sapphire, and we'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's put it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch does not wear conventionally due to the presence of the NATO strap. I would recommend that you have a wrist of at least 17 centimeters circumference to wear this watch, and I'll do my best to show it to you because, again, with the NATO strap, it wears a bit differently. It's broad across the wrist, and you can see that this is probably your best view. Down the barrel, it's right out to the edges of my wrist, and I think you need that 17 centimeter circumference wrist to wear this watch well. You can also see it's not gonna fit underneath a dress cuff. It's just never gonna look quite at home on my wrist on the NATO, but there you go. That's, that's over the top, perfectly squared and centered on my wrist. You need that big wrist for this model. Now, the NATO that you get will be one of the best in the world. As you can see, Omega makes a lovely factory piece, including all of the colors of the watch, white, gray, and orange. The hardware is both stainless steel and Omega branded. And then we have a simple Omega branded pin buckle for quick adjustments. Now you can see how a NATO strap works. It's underslung, and this does add thickness to the watch. So what I'm going to do now, because you've seen the strap and you've seen the fit, I'm going to remove the strap so you can get full advantage of the display case back. You can also get maybe a little bit of a better idea of how the watch wears on my wrist in terms of thickness when there is no strap. Now taking a look at the case itself, you can see that it's very familiar. Liar style lugs, that is they have that bevel that folds in as well as one that rolls outward. We've seen these on Seamasters and Speedmasters since the early 60s. The mid case is longitudinally set and finished. There is a polished bevel that runs the length of the case on both sides and it expands a bit at the end of the lugs. We have a crown that's slightly countersunk for protection and we have shoulders for the chronograph pushers. But take note, these are not screw down pushers. They have shoulders and though they look knurled, like they might be screw downs, they are not. The watch has a crown featuring lovely detail, polished and knurled on its side, media blasted on its top with a raised and relieved Omega logo. And then we have the helium escape valve, which like the crown is slightly countersunk. This is there for saturation divers. If you think there's gonna be helium buildup in your watch during a dive, then you want this watch. You want to open this before you dive, and then the helium will be released by the valve rather than threatening to blow out the seals or the crystals of the watch. We have a bezel that is sharp, positive, has a clear, crisp detent, and it is 120 click. Now you can see I line up that broad arrow, minute hand with the luminescent pearl. Now I can time an interval between 30 and 60 minutes. Now with my conventional chronograph, I'm only gonna get a 30 minute register. Well here, I can actually time two concurrent events and you can see that I'm able to do that using the superimposed hours and minutes display over at three o'clock. And then also with the bezel, I also have a tri-register chronograph setup. And this is actually quite brilliant because the superimposed mono counter for the chronograph functions means I can have a twin register dial that's nice and balanced and clean and vintage inspired. But then I also get the tri-register hours, minutes, and seconds. And if I turn the light off here, you could see that not only is the chronograph sub-register loomed, but so is the entire dial and the bezel. And there's differential loom green for the bezel pearl and the minute hand, so I can tell them apart at a glance at night. Note the entire dial is loomed. The watch features a dial made of media blasted titanium. You can see it says TI just under the hands. So this is a titanium dial in a steel case with a ceramic bezel insert that helps to deflect scratches and scuffs. Turn it all over, we have caliber 9900. Omega started rolling out the master chronometer Planet Oceans in 2016, and you can see this is exactly what you get when you take the caliber 9300 and you upgrade it to master chronometer METAS certified standard. So METAS is more than just the ISO 
3159 standards that you get with a COSC chronometer test. This still meets the COSC standards, but it's a fully cased up movement, not, not a bare movement as with the COSC. It's a six position test, not just five. And it's also a test of winding efficiency, power reserve, shock resistance, anti-magnetism, and water resistance, not just chronometric precision. We have a rugged movement with silicon hairspring and anti-magnetic escapement. So it's basically immune to any level of magnetism. We also have a full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock tolerance, a tri-level George Daniels envisioned coaxial escapement. He envisioned the coaxial in 1974. Omega adopted it in 1999, first in the DeVilles, and now it's spread to the entire line and most of the current Omega movements are purpose-built coaxials from the base plate up. So they're very accurate, they're very tough, they require very little maintenance. All of this 600 meters water resistant, you can see we have a column wheel chronograph for crisp and positive column wheel actuation. That's what you hear and feel when you operate the chronograph. And then we also have a vertical clutch, which engages without any jump or stagger. If you wish to leave your chronograph engaged full time, thanks to the vertical clutch, you can do that without any additional wear or tear on the mechanism. There is a twin main spring barrel setup, so it doesn't overdrive the balance when fully wound, nor does it start to underdrive the balance and lose significant amplitude after 24 hours the way a single barrel would. So this 60 hour system uses two barrels, not just for a long power reserve, but for a more even torque release. And of course, yes, it is a 60 hour power reserve. That is important to mention. This 54 joule movement has significant endurance thanks to the two barrels that are visible underneath. It's lovely arabesque spiral Cote de Genève and blackened screws. And the watch has two setting modes. One is conventional stop seconds or hacking. So you pull the crown out all the way, the watch stops. But you also have a time zone function that allows you to set the hour hand independently while the other functions, including the chronograph, continue to operate. And you can see this is a high grade dial with sunken sub registers and applique indices, as well as Omega logo and marquee. This is the look of a premium timepiece from one of the flagship brands in watchmaking. Reach out to TMASO at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.